Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you are having a good weekend so far. I hope that you're staying healthy and you're optimistic, happy in life. Welcome Fuong. Hi Catherine. Hi Azamat. Great to see many of our subscribers joining in and nice to see our members coming back. Hi Maria, hi Sarah, Chayani, Domenico. It's great to have you all with me here today for this IELTS listening class. We will be focusing on uh, school curriculum and dinosaurs, specifically the T-Rex. This will be part three, part four of the listening section, practice and strategy lesson. Listening, usually the first part of the uh, IELTS exam for the sitting section of the exam. Of course, the speaking is done separately. You have to focus, you have to use good strategies to get those high, high band scores. As students, this uh, lesson, these materials are brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Visit us at gieltshelp.com. We will use the websites uh, today in just a few moments for the listening audio. These are the textbooks, the materials for these live classes. So as a subscriber, as a member, make sure to join our premium IELTS package so you can get the most effective learning uh, by clicking this big uh, red button that's just right up there. It's a one-time payment. You get lifetime access. We are an IDP affiliate, British Council partner, IELTS Test Registration Center. I'm a certified British Council agent. So you're in great hands with us. Uh, we help thousands of students every day um, and our courses do not cost a lot of money. Our focus is on helping you. General IELTS, gieltshelp.com. Click that big red button there. All right. Lovely. Um, students, um, if you have questions, uh, you can send me an email. My email is adrian at aehelp.com. I'm always happy to get questions. If you're not sure about some part of the IELTS, you're curious about um, English grammar, um, or you want to know a little bit about uh, studying in Canada, what you need to do, just send us an email and myself or one of my colleagues will help you out. Um, we have uh, this discount code for the websites uh, if you're registering a 94ME for a 10% discount and uh, that's coming from our latest YouTube video release. All right, uh, LOL says you don't reply. Um, that doesn't give me a lot of information, LOL. Let me know what you mean by that. We reply to all of our emails, so if we missed your email, it's not on purpose. Um, you just need to send us another email, and uh, then we'll go from there. I don't reply to all emails because we get a lot of them. So it's, I'm doing the live classes, but we have a great team that, we, uh, that work together for all of this for you, okay? Um, all right, um, apps, yes, academic IELTS help, uh, general IELTS help. Um, Sarah, we shouldn't miss your emails, especially yours, because I was waiting for yours in regards to a couple of uh, points. So just uh, send me uh, the email again um, and um, I'll uh, check it out, okay? So if you don't get a reply, don't be shy, just send it again. Um, but definitely give us a chance. Give us 24 to 48 hours, okay, to, to give you your answers. We get lots of inquiries. Okay. Um, Colbeer says, I got an app subscription and I'm loving it. All right, Colbeer, that's good news. Um, Colbeer, you can link your app to the website too. So if you, when you're in the app um, and you click more, it'll say link to the website. So you can unlock the website as well. Okay, so your app will unlock the full website. All right, students, but it is a listening class and some of you are like, wow, emails, apps, let's just listen. Um, we'll do that. Um, we've got uh, speaking tomorrow, don't forget about that. And we've got listening right now and we've got a task two on Discord on Sunday. Uh, 
Discord is awesome too. So check out Discord. All right. Um, great. So let's get into um, listening. Uh, Sarah, I'll do a check. You should have um, a reply. Send it again. Okay. Emails are funny sometimes. Um, they can go in different places. So send it again. All right. Okay. Um, so listening strategies. Um, we started with listening part one and two last week. Um, and the first strategy I told you was to look at the topics of the listening section. So we did that. And uh, we saw that listening section three is about a student that goes to see their professor to find out information. And then we saw that uh, part four will be um, about dinosaurs, specifically about the T-Rex or Tyrannosaurus Rex. Okay. Um, so get ready for that. Visualize that. That's what we have as uh, part of the uh, thumbnail picture for this class, the T-Rex. So um, in listening, you have to see the story. You have to be the story. Okay. So listening strategies, uh, tip one, um, see the story, be the story. So, for example, here in part three, as we're listening to this, you are the student that goes to see the professor. And in uh, part four, you are the Tyrannosaurus Rex that eats people. No, no, no. But you can be the Tyrannosaurus Rex that lived with the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. How do you spell that? D I N O S A U R S. There you go. Dinosaurs. All right. Good. Visualize it. Picture it. Um, while you have time to read the questions, paraphrase them in your head. Okay, so in the listening, they always give you some time to review questions. Um, so they'll say, okay, you have uh, some time to look at questions 21 to 26. And then they give you about 20 seconds to do that. So here, question 21, multiple choice. Why does the student go to see the professor? The student uh, visits the teacher because, right? So it's like a quick paraphrase. It's just another way to say that sentence. So this is the same as that, right? Um, so you paraphrase, okay? And you do that for as many of the questions as possible. We're going to talk strategy we're going to look at the answers after we do the listening, everyone. So get your ears on. And let's listen and answer questions. And then um, I'll give you tips, uh, Jose, for the fill in the blanks and other question types as well. But for now, let's go to the website. And again, you can get the premium course by clicking that red button. Um, let's get to the My Student account. Um, Sarah, also, I just uh, going back to your question about emails, sometimes it does take us 48 hours. So we usually do 24 hours, but sometimes it's 48. So give us time, give us time. All right, um, so here we go. We're in the student account. You've got your computer-based practice exams, your academic course, um, and your audio CDs down here. Okay, so this is test uh, two, track three. We're going to listen. Students, do not put your answers in the chat, okay? So no answers in the chat now. We will do this later. 
So we want to give everybody an, an equal chance to answer. Okay, so just put it on a piece of paper and another document on your computer. Um, here we go, everyone. Let's listen and answer. Now turn to section three. Take some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Listening section three. You will hear a student and her professor talking about their class. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Come in, Laura. Thanks a lot for making the time to see me, Professor Gorman. As I mentioned in my email, I've been very ill this past week, and missing the first week of school is not a good way to start the term. Indeed, it's not a very good start at all, but I think you can overcome it. You had a good grade in my course last term, and I'm sure this absence is just a bump in the road as far as this term goes. Now, what would you like to discuss? Well, I don't even have a syllabus, so maybe you could give me one and then we could go over it in some detail. Yes, that would be sensible. Let me grab your syllabus. Here you go. As you see, the class meets each Monday and Thursday from 10 to 11.30 in room A313 of the Juliet Building. Do you know where that is? Yes, the Juliet Building is right next to the Student Union Building, correct? Yes, that's right. OK, so next are my office hours. I hold them each Monday and Wednesday from 2.30 to 4 in the afternoon. If these do not work for you, feel free to send me an email and we can make arrangements to meet at another time. Now, let's discuss the books you'll need. As you see on the syllabus, there are two books you'll need for this course. You need not purchase either of them, however, as there are several copies of each available in the library. I like keeping my books for future reference, so I would prefer to buy both books. Are they available in the bookshop? The first one is, but the second one must be purchased from Buster's Books. Do you know where Buster's Books is located? Roughly, but do you have an address? Yes, the address is 3419 Young Street in Brighton. Right, I know where that is. Do you know how much the books cost, approximately? I think the one at the University Bookshop is about £20, and the one at Buster's is about £15. So that's a total of £35 for the two of them. You now have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen to the rest of the discussion and answer questions 27 to 30. Great. Can we talk a little about the coursework required? Of course. There are two essays, one midterm exam and one final exam. Wow. That's a lot of coursework. Yes, but at this level I don't believe in just having one essay or one final exam determine your entire mark in a class. I like arranging it so that a student can have a chance to reflect on their ability and understanding of materials throughout the term. That makes sense. So what are the percentages associated with each assignment and exam? The first essay is worth 15%, the second is worth 25%, the midterm exam is worth 20% and the final exam is worth 40%. Would you like to talk about the first essay? It is due next Friday. Yes, could we? Of course. The essay should be approximately 1,500 words and the topic must be chosen from the list. And can I get a copy of the list? There is one attached to your syllabus. Right. So do we have to tell you what topic we are writing on beforehand? No, it's all right. You only have to notify me if you want to do a topic that is not on the list. Right. Is the essay due in class or can we submit it by email? I will accept essays without penalty until midnight after the class it's due. So yes, you can submit it by email, hand it in during class or submit it to the department office. 
If you submit it to the office, make sure to get a timestamp put on it so that I can be sure the paper was submitted on time. And also, be sure to make... That is the end of section three. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Use that half minute to check your answers, check for spelling, check for mistakes with instructions, potentially. And um, now, uh, let's go through the answers together. So, I was giving you a bit of help here um, because I was uh, showing you, you know, where the audio is. Um, according to what is being said or what is happening. Uh, when you're practicing at home, this is a good idea. It's a good idea to highlight the parts as you listen where you feel the audio is. And that way you kind of train your brain to follow with the audio. But definitely don't do that during the real exam. I said this, I think, last week as well, okay? So this is just a reminder, this is a tip, and it's a really interesting one, and it's an important one. Tip three, um, highlight uh, words that help you to position yourself um, in the audio during practice at home. Uh, this will train your brain to follow accurately with the information. But do not do this. Do not highlight, circle, or underline um, information during the real exam as this is distracting. Pay attention to the answers only. Okay, so at home you train your brain because hey, if you miss an answer, whatever, right? You can listen again, it's not a big deal. But in the real exam, if you're paying attention to circling and highlighting, then you're going to miss the answers. And guess what? That's really bad because the instructions say that you will hear the audio only once. You need to answer while you're listening. So if you're circling while you're listening, then you're not answering while you're listening. Okay, everybody get that, right? Okay, again, a thumbs up, please, because if I can just save one or two students from making this mistake, my day is good, okay? All right, clear. Harriet says yes, Chayani says yes, Fong says okay, all right? So no circling or underlining in the real exam, but it's good practice before the real exam, okay? All right, uh, let's answer some questions. So number 21, why does the student go to see the professor? She says something, okay, she has been uh, in the hospital, A or B, she has been ill, or C, she registered late. Harriet uh, Banda says B. Domenico agrees. Um, Omina says ill. Omina, that's good, but you have to give the letter, not the word, especially in the paper-based exam. Be really careful. Patek says B. Domenico says B. Everybody says B. B is correct. In the computer-based exam, it's um, less likely to make mistakes because you just click on the right answer. In the paper-based exam, though, you actually have to put your answer in the answer sheet, so be careful not to make mistakes when you're actually putting the answer in the answer sheet, okay? Let's be really careful. Okay, so fill out the details. Notice how I highlighted the word syllabus. It's because obviously I was waiting for this. They're talking about the syllabus and um, uh, the student says, can we talk about the syllabus? The syllabus, it's basically the instructions for your course. Uh, if you have done university in the US or Canada or the UK or Australia, you have learned that the first day of a university class starts by going over the syllabus. Anybody experience that? 
I guess in lots of other countries it's probably the same system as well so um, when you go into your first year math class or your first year engineering class the professor gives you a syllabus of course the syllabus is online these days as well uh, some classes are going paperless now so you only see it online and then basically the professor goes through step by step and says okay these are the class times location office hours so obviously this is a typical situation that you will find yourself in if you're studying abroad is listening to a syllabus or going over a syllabus right Tara says same in my university um, and uh, somebody says yes the same in Greece <laughs> Rocky says I reckon pretty much majority of the countries follow the same structure yeah I agree makes sense right let people know what's happening okay so uh, for this student so if you're like well, why do I need to know this well because you use it right? <laughs> in real life um, so class times something in Thursday 10 to 1130 uh, Gulai Sop says it's Monday Monday and Thursday yeah and you can just do mon that it's the easiest answer mon Monday and Thursday 10 to 11:30. Um, I always recommend using abbreviations when you whenever possible why do I say that why do you think I say that make sure the M is big okay and yes you can use all capital letters in the listening and reading for answers so here's another tip use use abbreviations whenever possible so tip Number four, uh, use abbreviations whenever possible. So mon instead of Monday. Why do I say that? Why? Why use abbreviations? I'm using the French keyboard suddenly. Oh, why? Uh, why use abbreviations? Uh, Harry Jot, it says saves time. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. yeah, reduces typos, exactly. Uh, reduces the chance of mistakes, especially in the listening section. It's important, not only because it saves time, not only because it reduces the chance of mistakes, but... you're doing the paper-based exam it also lets you focus more on the audio right so instead of um, instead of worrying about writing out the whole word incorrectly especially when you get into months like February right um, then uh, you're like okay wait month and I'm still listening right so yeah avoiding mistakes saving time focusing more on the audio those are all reasons that you should use abbreviations. so know your abbreviations and know your capitals and yes you can use all capital letters in listening and uh, reading but not in writing somebody sent us an essay to check with all capital letters and we have to send it back that's what will happen in your IELTS too. You'll they'll mark you very low, but not in writing. Okay, don't write all capital letters. They want to see correct capitalization. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Doing great. Let's answer some more questions. Uh, so location. Um, where is this building? Where is their class? <clears throat> yep Sarah says I do remember I had in part four and listening a long word as the first answer I was spelling it and suddenly knew the part ended Ooh. yeah Sarah careful it's just you want to in that case too, you just want to write it down don't worry about spelling and then when you transfer your answer the answer sheet then check your spelling so don't worry about spelling that's a good point Sarah let me tell everybody about this so uh, don't worry about spelling while you listen
in the paper-based exam or yeah in the computer based you have to worry a little bit more because you don't have as much time to transfer but you do have a little bit of time so if you have a long word even in the computer based exam and you're like eh, I'm not sure if that's correct don't start tripping out about it okay just remember it in your head go okay that one I got to check and then come back later so do not worry about spelling while you listen in the paper or in the computer uh, based exam um, you have time after to check and correct okay because you don't want it happen what happened to you Sarah where you're like oh did that part just end um, okay all right so I see that Alex Amina Fuang I'll say that the answer is Juliet building and it is the Juliet building um, so you can spell it like this Juliet or you can use the French spelling. Okay, both are okay. It's uh, originally a French name, Latin name originally, but uh, both Juliet and Juliet. So both spellings are correct. Again, capitalization, big J, very important. Okay. All right. So Juliet, Juliet, don't put both, okay? Definitely don't do like, oh, I'm gonna be super fancy and impress them by putting both uh, English and French spelling of Juliet. No, okay? That's maybe for some of you Francophones out there. Um, Sarah, no putting both versions, just one, okay? Um, and then um, number 24, uh, Monday and Wednesday, 2.30 to 4. Um, numbers are really easy to listen to in the audio, so those help you to position. Here the um, professor clearly says, this is at 2.30 to 4, but if that doesn't work, send me an email. Harry Judd, it's not his office house. Careful. Masala says it's the office hours. Yeah. And technically it doesn't have to be capital because it's a common noun, but it's okay if you write office hours like this. Okay, just because you have the capital C, capital L there as well. And notice how class times is big C, little t. Um, so you could write it like that. I'm pretty sure they'll just accept all versions here. Hyun Valador, welcome to our group of members. Thanks for joining. Uh, send me an email so I can hook you up with your perks. So office hours for number 24. Yeah, absolutely. For all of you that got that, make sure you write hours. Uh, okay. Uh, Chayon Kip, you do not do not use a correction pen. So there's no correction pens or tapes. Um, usually they do not allow that. Um, but uh, you can do a strike through and then correct. Okay, Chayani, so if you made a mistake, um, what you can do is you can go reap like that and then go office, okay? Um, but again, um, don't worry about mistakes, Chani, because you have um, a chance to transfer your answers in the answer sheet in the computer-based exam, you just do delete, right? Backspace. Okay, um, so no spell check, no grammar check uh, in the computer-based, but you do have copy-paste function, okay? Um, no search function. <laughs> That's another one students ask. Do I have control F for searching? Control find? No. No control find. Um, okay. Um, required books for the class. Uh, book one available at the bookshop. And they talk a lot about this, so be patient. Patience is very important in part three and part four. Sometimes they give you the answers a little bit later. Book one is available at the bookshop, and how much does it cost? I don't really remember, so I hope you guys can help me out here. I don't have the answer sheet in front of me. So how much is it? Rocky says 20 pounds. I'll take the most popular answer. I seem to remember, um, yeah, I, I, I remember the, I don't can't remember if it was the professor or the student, but one of them said 30 uh, five uh, pounds uh, total. So even if you missed this answer, but you got the 15 pounds here, and then you got, okay, well, uh, 35 uh, minus 15 equals 20. 
Um, if you're quick, if you're being smart, you usually have more than one chance to get the correct answer, okay? Keep that in mind, everybody, all right? So uh, when you pay careful attention, and this is the next tip, tip number six, we're already on tip number six, schmoly. All right, uh, tip six. A lot of answers, especially in part one, two, and three, part four, not so much, but in parts one, two, and three of the listening, many answers are given two or more times. So if you are patient and careful, you can get assurance that you have the right answer. And if you miss the answer, stay calm because you might just get a second chance. Also, logic will still often help you figure out the right answer. And you're going to see an example of that very, very, very soon. Okay. Um, let's continue. So, um, yeah, so cost 20 pounds. By the way, students, don't put the word pound. Um, when you have the uh, symbol, so notice how here you have the symbol for pounds. Um, you cannot write the word pound. Uh, IELTS will mark that wrong. I know it's harsh. Uh, but if you were put the word pounds, first of all, you're wasting time because it's like saying pounds, pounds. Pounds, 20 pounds. We never do that. Um, so IELTS is also checking to see how much you're paying attention. If you have it, don't put it in. If you don't see it, put it in, but use the symbol. Okay. Got it? That's an important one, all right? So don't add the words or symbols if they are included in the question. Is that tip number seven? I think so. Tip seven, do not add symbols, and it's a waste of time too, right? Symbols or uh, words for symbols especially uh, when it is given in the question. Okay, they don't need it. It's there, they know it. Okay, if it's not, then you have to. Then you must add it. So pay attention. Okay, I can see a lot of people saying, got it. Good, Azamat, Chayani. Mamoon, Alex, good. All right. Um, back to point. Uh, book two. Where can we get book two from? Where do we uh, Where do we get book two? Number twenty six. Where do we get book two from? Book two. Subscribers. Where do we get book two from? They say this answer about two or three times at least. So you just listen carefully. It's a name and it's not a tricky name. So you should be able to figure it out, especially because bust is a word in English as well, or buster is a word in English as well. So if you're like, well, I don't know how to spell names. Well, it's also a word. You can look up buster in the dictionary and you will find a definition. Um, busters, <clears throat> absolutely, busters books, yeah. You only need this word. Now, if you don't do a possessive, so if you just do it without the apostrophe and you just write busters as a plural, that's okay too. All right, I don't think they need you to know that it's uh, possessive because it could be a plural. It could be like busters books, okay? Um, but buster is not enough. Harriet Banda, if you just put buster, it's not. It has to be busters. And Fuang, make sure you use the apostrophe and not the colon, okay? Students, don't use the colon, no more, or sorry, the, uh, yeah, the quotation, not colon, quotation. Don't use the quotation, that would be wrong, okay?
okay? So that would not be correct. It's the apostrophe, okay? Use the apostrophe. Um, this is a side tip, but for all of you who are preparing for the IELTS exam, I very strongly recommend that you use an English-based QWERTY keyboard, okay? Um, you should be using an English-based keyboard, not because English is so awesome and such, but because most software and most information in the world on the internet is in English. So using an English keyboard is actually going to make your life more efficient and then switch it to whatever other languages you use when you need to. But use your keyboard in English, okay? And I know that's a big ask. That's a hard one for a lot of people. Um, even for my wife, um, she doesn't use the English keyboard and it drives me crazy. Um, so use the English keyboard, okay? And yeah, and when I'm helping people and they're like searching in English or typing in English essay and they're using a different keyboard, I'm just like, Rah! Like I'm literally ripping hairs. I'm like, where's the apostrophe? Where's the, like, how do you even, how do you, like, this is so hard. So, um, and it, you know, if, if you're like, well, Adrian, I don't wanna do that, right? Get two keyboards, get two wireless keyboards. Have one in your own language, have one in uh, English and just swap them, okay? So use an English keyboard. Uh, for your IELTS studies and by the way in your exam center they have English QWERTY keyboards only they even warn you about that during your application so they will say you will have an English QWERTY keyboard make sure you're familiar with it if you're searching for letters and if you're searching for symbols during your writing and during your answers that's gonna be a big issue Okay, so use an English keyboard for your IELTS studies because your exam will be using an English uh, QWERTY, QWERTY, yeah, all the top letters, right? QWERTY keyboard, okay? Uh, if you must, buy two, have two. Um, there, keyboards aren't that expensive. You can buy keyboards for cheap, cheap. So if you must have to um, buy and use the English one when you are typing in English, okay? Uh, Masala says in India, we use only the English keyboard. Yeah, it's not um, not always true, right? So some people are use, use different ones, yeah. Uh, Blackstar says English keyboard? What? <laughs> right? Yeah, different languages have different keyboards, different key setups, right? Like um, the Y or the Z might be switched and so on, right? So be really careful, okay? Yeah, English keyboard, absolutely. There is a difference and sometimes a big difference. Okay, um, that was another very important tip, all right? Uh, let's look at the coursework. Uh, first essay, 15%. Second essay, how many percent is the second essay? Midterm is 20%. And something here is 40%. Okay, well, 40 plus 20 is 60, plus 15 is 75. So logic tells me that it's 25, and I'm happy that none of you are writing percent. Fong. Uh, because percent is given, right? So again, you have the symbol. So you only need to write 25, okay? If you write percent or you add the symbol, it can get marked wrong. So be really careful. It's just 25. And here, if you miss it, it's logic, right? 15 plus 20 plus 40, 75, 100% minus 75% equals 25%. So if you miss an answer, don't freak out. Remember what I said, logic will often help you answer questions. You can usually take a darn good guess at some of these questions, okay? And even this last one, so you got a first essay, second essay, midterm exam, and for number 28, what do you have? What do you have? Yeah, final exam, two words. 
If you only put final, Uma, you'll get it wrong. Why? So just final would be wrong. If you put final or finals, <clears throat> wrong. You have to have final exam. Be really careful. Why? Chani says, final's confusing. Yeah, because it's like final what, right? Final project, final essay, final speech, final presentation. There's a lot of different finals that you could have in a class, right? So the IELTS exam says, well, it's not good enough. It doesn't answer the question. It's a final what, right? It's uh, not clear. Um, just imagine if you're a student in this class and all the professor put there is final, then you would have 200 hands going up going, final what, professor? Right? And then the professor would be like, oh, sorry, uh, final exam. Right? So that's what the IELTS says um, is the logic why you need both words. Okay? Pay attention. Careful, careful when it says two words. It must be two words at times. Okay, um, 29. How long uh, should the first assignment be? Now, it doesn't say assignment. They say essay, so they paraphrase. How long should the first essay, first assignment, be approximately? 1,500 words. That is right. It's 1,500, so number 1,500 words. Um, again, you need words. Because if you don't put that, it could be 1,500 pages, 1,500 characters, 1,500 paragraphs. I don't know. It'd be a harsh literature class. 1,500 pages, you're writing a book and a big one at that. Um, so 1,500 words. Okay. That's the first assignment. It's the correct answer. Words has to be plural. If you write word, you're in trouble. Well, you'll get it wrong. Okay, uh, question 30, it's called an inference type question. Make sure that you read and review this uh, well before the audio starts because you have to have a global understanding. That means a complete understanding. So the student's class ends at 11.30 a.m. on the day the paper is due. Decide whether the paper is handed in on time or late. Uh, put the correct letter A or B. A, late penalty. B, no late penalty. What's the situation? The paper is handed in at 5 p.m. the same day, dropped off at the department office with no timestamp received. Okay, well, if the class ended at 11.30, then this is obviously being handed in after the class that day and it's got no timestamp so we have no idea when it was handed in the professor said that it's okay to hand a paper in until midnight but it has to have a timestamp on it so the answer is a late penalty there's no way for the professor to know that it wasn't handed in the morning uh, the next day because there's no timestamp. We don't know, right? Because it was handed in after the end of the class. So it comes in with all of the other papers, no timestamp. And the professor says, make sure to get a timestamp on it so that I know it was handed in before midnight. Correct answer is A, late penalty, logic right careful really pay attention to negative words students so negative words those should always catch your eye anytime you see a negative word like no timestamp that should be like a uh, siren going off okay so it should be like a uh, red uh, siren that's like wee 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 spinning um, no time stamp, no time stamp, no time stamp. Um, okay, so why no time stamp, right? Why, why is it no time stamp? So anytime you see a negative word, red flag, red flag. Okay, 
All right. Students, how did you do? What'd you get? How did you do out of 10 here? Okay, for part three. So what was your, what'd you get? Um, part three, part four, your goal to get a nice high band score, you should be aiming for at least six or more. Okay. Domenico says 10 out of 10. Domenico, that is fantastic. Chen says red flag, red flag. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Chen, thank you for that. Um, Everything Exotic says eight, Sarah nine. Those are good. Eights and nines are great to see. Seven's pretty good, Harry Jot. Chayani, seven's not bad at all. Fuang, seven, five, yeah, on the lower end. Okay, uh, let's do part four. We've all been waiting for this, right? The T-Rex. We all love a good T-Rex. Who doesn't love a T-Rex? Okay, Jurassic Park, here we come. Uh, let's put on our ears. Again, students, answers on a separate sheet, not in the chat. Give everybody a chance. Here we go. Back to our website. Again, lots of goodies for you on the website. Click those big red buttons to join the premium package. And now, get ready to listen. Now turn to section four. Take some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Listening section four. You will hear a lecture about the dinosaur Tyrannosaurus rex. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good evening class. If you are registered for Anthropology 322, you are in the right place. Today we will be talking about the most famous of all dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus rex, or T-rex as it is commonly referred to. This dinosaur has a fearsome reputation, mainly due to popular culture films and books. In this class, we will be discussing the facts regarding the Tyrannosaurus rex, as opposed to its Hollywood depiction. Tyrannosaurus rex lived from approximately 80 to 65 million years ago. Of course, the reason it died out 65 million years ago is the same reason all of the dinosaurs died out at that time, a massive asteroid which hit the Earth and destroyed almost all life. The period in which the Tyrannosaurus rex lived is known as the Late Cretaceous Period. This reality is in contrast to fictional portrayals which often cast the T-Rex as living in the Jurassic Period. In fact, T-Rex did not come to be until 65 million years after the end of the Jurassic Period. Tyrannosaurus rex was a meat-eater, but it is not entirely clear whether it killed its own prey or if it merely scavenged the prey of other dinosaurs. In our minds, we imagine T-Rex fighting to the death with other dinosaurs, but it is not known for sure whether this is the truth. Tyrannosaurus rex was a large dinosaur, not nearly the largest, mind you, but still large by any standards of modern day wildlife. The dinosaur's length was approximately 12 meters, its height could reach six meters, and it weighed anywhere between five and seven tons. That weight is the equivalent of about 80 average-sized human beings. If humans had been around back then, we would have been the perfect size for an afternoon snack. The location of T-Rex fossils discovered is very interesting. They have been found in Western North America, as far south as Texas and as far north as Alberta. And they have also been found in Eastern Asia, mainly in Mongolia. How is this possible? How can fossils be found in such different regions of the world? The answer is what geologists call continental drift. The continents have not always been in the same location. They have shifted, and around the time of T-Rex, Western North America and Eastern Asia were connected. This explains perfectly the discovery of the fossils in the different locations. One of the more well-known interesting facts about Tyrannosaurus rex is that it had extremely short arms. They measured only about one meter long, which is very short when you consider the size of the dinosaur. To put such small arms in perspective, 
It would be as if humans had arms that measured only 10 centimetres. What use would they be? Well, that is one of the questions that has led scientists to believe that T. rex was a scavenger and not a predator. It is very difficult to believe that it could have been an effective predator with arms being so important for hunting. Another fact that leads scientists to believe T. rex was a scavenger was its extremely strong sense of smell. This enabled T. rex to smell carcasses over long distances, giving it a big advantage as a scavenger. On the other side of the argument, T. rex had very large serrated teeth, which would have been perfect for tearing through the tough skin of other dinosaurs. If T. rex was a pure scavenger, it may not have required such teeth. Another interesting point about their teeth was that they were replaceable over time. Unlike humans, who grow only two sets in a lifetime, T. rex's teeth could be replaced over and over throughout a lifetime. Again, this is evidence that they were, at least in part, likely predatory. That is the end of section four. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Awesome, and then in the paper-based exam, you actually have another 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. And in the computer-based exam, you have about uh, four minutes um, for checking, so you got a little bit of extra time but not as much as in the paper-based exam because you put your answers directly in. Um, however, the computer-based exam does have advantages for sure, and I think the listening is easier in the computer-based exam because of the format. Uh, you don't have to write as much. Um, there's more dragging and dropping and clicking on the answer. Um, all right. So uh, let's answer these questions together now, everybody. Um, here we had a multi multiple choice um, answer and the tip or the trick for this type of a question is um, you should take notes like T-Rex dies not does dies dinosaurs die asteroid hits earth okay so you can kind of write those notes down, all right? Um, number one, the dinosaurs become extinct. Then I know that, hey, okay, uh, check. Yeah, Tyrannosaurus rex comes into existence, nope. Tyrannosaurus rex dies, yeah, I mean, Tyrannosaurus rex is a dinosaur, right? So logically. Uh, a large asteroid hits the Earth, check. Okay, so one, three and four uh no no eh, no uh yeah that looks good so the answer is c and a lot of you got that fuang rocky chayani um joaquin masala farangis nguyen chen it's not three it's c uh have you have you done harriet sarah very good job yeah it was c All right, um, next one, number 32. A Tyrannosaurus rex lived during which time? A, Jurassic, B, Late Cretaceous, C, Late Triassic. Well, um, they don't say this one, so that's no. Okay. Um, and um, the professor clearly explains that um, it's the Late Cretaceous, it's B, because Movies like to use the word Jurassic. It just sounds cool. Jurassic Park sounds so much cooler than Late Cretaceous Park. Just imagine there's two parks. You can go to one or the other. You don't know anything about these parks. You just know their name. One park is called Jurassic Park. The other one's called Late Cretaceous Park. Which one would you go to? Yeah, most kids especially, probably Jurassic Park. It just sounds cooler. But that's not when the dinosaurs really roamed the earth. Um, so careful with movie information, right? Now, B, B is the correct answer, okay? So B. Yep, there we go. All right, late Cretaceous. How tall? Um, so they don't actually say tall the speaker says big and then says height 
Um, so what was the height? Again, B, yes, it was six meters. So T-Rex was six meters tall and 12 meters long, right? Very nice. Okay, number 34, um, the theory which explains why fossils are found in very different regions of the world is called, and it's two words, careful, when it's just one question like that and it says no more than two words, almost guarantee you that it's going to be two words, okay? That's right, Masala, that Jurassic Park franchise has made a lot of money from that name. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, all right, so number 34, continental drift. If you put small letters, that's okay too. All right, continental drift was the right answer. Capital letters okay because they're saying it called, it's called continental drift. But if you wrote lowercase, that's okay as well because it is a common noun. Okay, now um, here it says write no more than two words. Okay, now it also says uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex, predator or scavenger. Okay, that's giving us a lot of help. So number 35, extremely something arms. Very nice, Fuang, Rajput, Rutu, Domenico, short arms, yeah. Everybody loves doing the little short arm impersonation of T-Rex. If T-Rex were alive today, they'd be so angry at humans. We all make fun of it for its short little arms, even though T-Rex has been dead for 65 million years. We still make fun of its short little arms. I bet we wouldn't do that if one was standing in front of you. You're like, hey, big guy, what's up with the little claws? Huh? Huh? Thank you. Ice cream. Um, all right. Uh, so, yeah, tiny little arms. Um, arms are important for hunting. Sure. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, if the arms are important for hunting and it had extremely short arms, then what's the answer for number 36? Harry Jodd says scavenger. Yes. Scavenger. Absolutely, right? You don't need arms to eat dead things. Um, so scavenger is correct. Short arms, scavenger. If it had big arms, it could have like wrestled with the other dinosaurs, grabbed them and like, like, or like, well, you know, but there's Godzilla. Godzilla kind of has little short arms too. What's up with that, right? Godzilla should have big arms, right? Godzilla kind of, I think it's supposed to be a T-Rex, like a giant T-Rex. Everybody loves Godzilla. All right, um, so next one here. Strong sense of smell. Mmm, something delicious and dead in the distance. Um, able to detect carcasses from long, yeah, distances, Rajput and others. Distance is countable. You can have multiple distances. Okay, especially on a map. Okay. There are multiple distances for the same destination. So you can count it. It's a tricky one. Uh, you need the S to get this correct. So it's a trickier one. Um, able to detect carcasses from long distances. It's a scavenger. Okay. Large serrated teeth. Able to tear through tough something. 38. Able to tear through. Yes. Quan. Yummy. It's a dead stegosaurus in the distance there or a dead pterodactyl um okay uh tough skin yes tough skin those big teeth right very good uh number 39 if um if the t-rex is able to rip through the skin it's probably why it didn't need the big arms because it had the big head right t-rex is like you make fun of my little arms but you forget about my big head right I don't need arms. I've got my giant head. It's a predator. Don't misspell words that are given. Okay. Uh, be careful. So you have predator here. So make sure that you have the correct spelling there. Okay. All right. 
Um, so uh, number 40, last one, did not have to be careful with teeth. So rah, rah, just teeth flying out all over the place, gets a punch, blah, teeth flying out, no problem. Um, what's going on? Doesn't need a dentist. There's no, no dentist dinosaurs, at least not for the T-Rex. Because the teeth are replaceable, that's right. Yes, they are, they're replaceable. So if you're planning to be a dinosaur dentist, look for another job. Replaceable, right? You only need the word replaceable because they're giving you the word teeth, all right? Replaceable, replace with an E and then able. Okay, spelling's important. Yes, it is, Colbeer. Okay, um, so uh, what did you get from 40, everybody? So a lot of you were in class last week because you're subscribers. So I'm guessing, you know, you're with us um, regularly, which is a really good idea for IELTS study. Um, so how did you do out of 40? What did you get? And here's the exciting part. We can actually check your score on our website for a band score. Um, so we can jump over to aehelp.com at the very, very bottom of the website that you can't see. Uh, there's a score calculator that you can click on. If you open that up, you see it there. And bada bing, bada bang, there is the score calculator. So uh, Rocky says, I got 33. So Rocky, you got a 7.5. Patek, 31. You got a 7. Sarah, 35. You got an 8. KHTR, 32. You got a 7.5. So 31 is the cutoff, right, for that one. Uh, Domenico says, I got 38. You're going to get an 8.5. There you go. All right, very good. Um, so if you're in the high 30s, great. You're doing fantastic. Okay, it's awesome. Score calculator, it's free. It's on the website. Check it out, students. Um, on the website, you will find lots more practice exams, interactive courses. We're an official IELTS test registration center. British Council IDP partner and you can join our premium IELTS package by clicking on this big uh, red button right there. It's a one-time payment, lifetime access and you can use it for all of these live classes. You can use it on your phone. You can study anywhere and you can improve your English and your marks. It's worth the investment. Don't listen to me, listen to all of our awesome students that are here telling you the same, okay? So they will say, yep, that worked. All right, June says, I'm a dinosaur dentist. Yun, then that's why you're doing IELTS, to get another profession and study. <laughs> Mind you, dinosaur dentist, if you're working as an archeologist, you're probably, you know, you got an interesting job if you're looking for dinosaur teeth. Um, that's it for today, students, but tomorrow I am back with lots more live IELTS. Um, I will be uh, doing speaking part two cue card and speaking part three uh, classes. We will be interacting with students. We will be talking with each other, getting some band scores, getting tips, strategies, learning vocabulary. So come back tomorrow. Enjoy your weekend, have fun, get good rest, stay happy, be you, be yourself. I'm Adrian, much love to all of you wherever you are in the world right now. I'm in Victoria and I'm signing out for today, but I will be back tomorrow. Bye everyone.